midweek Lenten service for this Wednesday evening. Uh, during our service today, we'll be having another interview with a member of Lakeview. Uh, this evening, the interview will be with Taryn Lance. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Let us pray together as our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess together our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Show us your mercy, O God, and grant us your salvation. Give us the joy of your saving help again, and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Give peace in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Keep the nations under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and sustain me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Most high and holy God, pour out upon us your one and unifying spirit, and awaken in every confession of the whole church a holy hunger and thirst for unity in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of John. No one has ever ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. This is the Gospel of our Lord. This evening we are uh, talking to Taryn Lance, who is a newer member of Lakeview, and uh, she's also a member of our church council. And uh, so welcome, Taryn. And you can just introduce yourself and tell us about yourself and your family and how you came here to Lakeview. Okay, well, good evening. Um, I have been married to my husband for 40 years. We have two adult children. Uh, our daughter and her husband and her girls live in Sun Prairie. And our son and his wife and our two grandsons live about six blocks from us. And we've lived in this neighborhood forever, I think. Um, we moved to the north side in 1988. So we've been around this area a long time. Um, we came to Lakeview after a big upheaval at a previous parish we were in. Um, that really destroyed a pastor um, and we couldn't stay. So when we were looking for a new church, um, I was raised Lutheran, my husband was raised Catholic, and we spent 30 years in the Episcopal Church. Um, I tried this parish because it's close to home. We live 
just blocks from here. And I was greeted the very first Sunday I came by Art Zogbaum. Um, and he has been a kind and generous man to me and Mike from the beginning. Um, I also found that in this parish, there were people from my previous work life. Um, there was a, the man who was the uh, groundskeeper for the condo complex we lived in for nine years is a member here. Uh, a former coworker from St. Mary's has been a longtime parishioner. And our next door neighbors <laughs> that we've lived next to for 26 years are members here. Um, so we instantly had some connections. Um, and that made it an easy place to come. And my husband has said more than once since we started here four years ago, I wonder why we didn't come here right away, because it's so close to home. So that's how we ended up here, and, and we love it. Good. What do you love about it? Um, just that there are connections. Um, you know, people that were maybe didn't seem as welcoming in the beginning have become very kind to us. Um, my husband has had multiple orthopedic surgeries since we've been here. Um, and people don't fail to ask, how's he doing? Um, I've been teaching confirmation now for three years, so I've gotten to know some of the young people, which is very cool, um, and their families because of that. Um, we just feel connected. Um, you know, the rhythm is so different from our previous church, so that took some getting used to, but um, I was raised Lutheran, so um, it had some familiarity to me, um, but it's relaxed, and um, yeah, we like it here. How do, you, uh, how do you live out your faith in your daily life? Ooh. Well, I'm now retired, but as a nurse, um, I always felt like it was my ministry, not just my career. And so I've had the opportunity to pray with patients, to... Um, just to be a presence for them, and I think my faith really infused that. Um, I very, was very compassionate about my work, and I had a great passion for it. I'm retired now, um, and that's the piece I miss the most, is the connection and, and being a presence for folks. Um, now I'm a presence for my husband, because we're home together all the time. Um, and just finding peace in that, um, I think my faith has made that possible. Um, despite the years we've been married, it's not always easy, as everyone can tell you. Um, but um, my daily prayers and my faith have made that possible. Um, I also think that has, has been what um, has kept my heart um, safe not being able to see my kids and my grandkids and my mom. Um, I've seen my mother twice in the last year, um, and that's hard. She's 85, she has health issues, um, and that's been really difficult for her to not be around us. And she's never met my youngest grandson and has not spent much time with the three-year-old. So, yeah, that's been a tough thing, but I think my faith is probably what's helped me get through that. Um, all the times when it's easy to get discouraged when you're stuck at home and um, not being with those that you care the most about. Um, I think without faith, that would be really, really hard to do. Yeah, you mentioned, um, you know, living out your faith in your compassion and your work for other people and to find something to kind of replace that now that you're retired but with the pandemic that's not something you can do and so you know finding peace through your faith with what you can do as opposed to being frustrated by what you can't do um, seems like a great gift it, it has it has really been helpful to have that, to have that foundation, mm -hmm. without which I don't know how anybody would get through this time of isolation and quarantine and yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. How else has the pandemic affected you and mm. your husband? You mentioned not being able to see your grandchildren and your mother. Yeah, I, we have a six-month-old grandson who doesn't know our faces. Um, we've seen him a handful of times, and now that he is, he, he is more interactive, he's never seen us without a mask. Um, that's difficult. Um, the three-year-old knows us because we've been around him a lot before all this happened. Um, and our son and daughter-in-law are doing their best to protect us by limiting our exposure to the kids who are still going to daycare. Um, but that has been the hardest thing. And not seeing my mom. Um, last November, October, November, she was at an incredibly low point. And I said, I'm coming to see you. Pandemic be darned. Um, because she was, she was in a bad place. Um, she bawled from the time I got there and when I left. I stayed for the weekend. Um, and seeing her struggle has been difficult. Um, I was just there again for four days. She's had her vaccines now, so she's feeling more confident in that. But um, just being able to give her some peace and some quality interaction, um, but I miss that with the boys. Um, we've seen our granddaughters more. They're both teenagers, uh, and um, but we still miss that. Um, we have not seen my husband's sister and brother-in-law in a long time. She had a lung transplant shortly before the pandemic. Um, the August before this all started, and so we have not seen her for well over a year. Um, so missing all of that, that's been the hardest, yeah. Um, so I imagine you're, you're looking forward to the time when you can get the vaccine as well. Absolutely, yeah. Um, my husband and I both have some high-risk factors in our medical history, but by age, we're not yet eligible. Um, we are looking very forward to having had the vaccines so we can spend more time with our grandkids. Um, part of our retirement dream is to travel with our camper, um, and you can be distant when you're camping, um, but it's all the places you have to go and places you have to stop to get fuel and food and right. um, and not every place is as good at wearing masks. Um, so we're, we're in a quandary about whether we should start traveling or wait. Um, and right now we're, we're thinking we will wait just because we want to be protected and we want to protect those that we encounter. Back to talking about Lakeview, what are your hopes for the future of Lakeview? Oh, goodness. Um, you know, there's a very strong core here of people who are dedicated to being part of the service and serving the community as members of this church. And I want to see that core stay strong and maybe that core can strengthen new people or those who've been here last time. Um, you know, this church is really a presence in this neighborhood. Um, from the free Thanksgiving meal to the food pantry, um, the people here are so generous. And if there's a call made about we need for this, this community always rises to that occasion. And I want to see that stay strong. Okay. Thank you, Taryn. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you.
We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously protected us today. We ask you to forgive us all our sins, where we have done wrong, and graciously to protect us tonight. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.